Hello and welcome to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. If you're in a position of leadership now, chances are you're dealing with a lot more than you had bargained for. Thing is, you're not alone. You're not the only leader in this situation and you're not the only person. Everyone at every level is feeling the hit because nobody could have anticipated how deeply and thoroughly COVID-19 would have revolutionized our way of thinking and working. This crisis is creating a wave of disruption across all sectors. All of a sudden, business models aren't viable anymore and neither are supply chains. What's worse is that we don't even know to what extent things will return to the way they were before. Part of being a leader, though, is also to drive others, to inspire them and to give them stability, structure and momentum regardless of conditions. And while it's true that nobody could have predicted the impact that COVID-19 is having on us, it is also true that we have a history of studying ourselves under uncertainty and pressure, and we already know a lot about our own behavior in these conditions. In other words, while the way COVID-19 impacts your business and market is unique, your behaviors and the ones of your team are not. So, to make your life easier, even in this difficult moment, I think it's worth refreshing what behaviors you can reasonably expect from yourself and your team members, what exactly lies behind this behavior, and what to do to address it in a more informed and appropriate way. In general, whenever we face sudden disruption and change, we seek safety. It's a version of our ancient survival instinct, our fight, flight, or freeze response. Now, seeking safety doesn't only mean physical safety. It also means protecting and keeping what we own, what is ours and what we know. And at work, this translates in making sure we safeguard our position. And the best way we know to do so is by using our professionalism, by doing what we do best, what we are experts in. That makes us feel professional, valuable and irreplaceable, which is exactly the feeling we crave. However, what we often don't realize is that we will prioritize our need to feel professional and safe over our need to find a way out of the situation we're in. We become self-centered and self-focused. For example, we will want to feel professional and safe to the point that we'll use tools and routines that we're experts in, even if we know we'd be better off trying something new, maybe teaming up with someone else. That's how strong this instinct can get. And if your team is all working remotely, chances are that that physical separation will further encourage them to focus on themselves and on what they own. If this is the case in your team, and chances are it is to some extent, maybe just for one or two team members, your job as the leader is to, first of all, recognize and understand what is happening, and secondly, steer your team members away from their need to find safety by themselves by being the one providing them with a sense of safety. As for the first point, knowing about this should enable you to at least recognize if any of your team members are following a similar pattern of behavior. And when it comes to doing something about it instead, your best bet is to rely on two very simple and basic communication rituals. The first one is a basic team meeting, and the second one is a one-to-one -one with each team member. I assume you already have something similar in place, but I would like to share some points with you that may give you some additional perspective you could integrate in your strategy. First of all, it's worth making explicit to yourself and to everyone that the regularity of any ritual provides a rhythm, a structure to everyone involved, and we find safety in structures. The structure lets us know what to expect. And when everything else is changing around us, we do appreciate and find comfort in some stability. In practice, this means to not only do your team meetings and one-to-ones always on the same date and time, but for example, also to follow the exact same structure within the meeting every time. This will add to its predictability and regularity, which in a chaotic moment as this one is, is worth quite a lot. Secondly, let your team meeting be focused on tasks and processes and make the one-on-one -on -one only focus on the other person, on how he or she is coping and on how you can support him or her. During those meetings, try to focus less on tasks and more on consolidating the relationship you have with your team member or on establishing it from zero if you have done. Show your support 
and do so proactively. Your goal is to become someone that each team member feels like he or she can rely on and trust. As we've seen in the previous episode of this podcast, research shows that trust is the key driver of both performance and good behavior in teams. And if now isn't the time to double down on trust, I honestly don't know when the right time is. If you haven't listened to that episode, I suggest you get back to it. Even if you can't apply every aspect of it, it should at least give you some ideas of what areas to work on. Now, the case may also be that you don't feel too comfortable going down this path. Maybe you never used one-on-ones, or maybe you're skeptical because this has never been your leadership style in the team. But remember that such a change of context calls for new ways, and you can't rely on your usual way of leading because that's what you know and that's what makes you feel safe. Wrapping it up, you know your team members need safety more than anything now. They can follow their instinct and try to feel safe by doing what they can to protect themselves. Or you can be the one providing this sense of safety to them and encourage them to be more connected to the rest of the team. To do that, you have two weapons. The first one, regular remote team meetings and one-on-ones, which will provide some regularity and structure. And the second one, developing and consolidating trust with each team member. If your team trusts you and acknowledges that you provide regularity and rhythm in these crazy times, you will still need to get the job done. But you will also know that your team has your back and it's not every man for himself. And last thing, I know times are difficult for you and for everyone, but try to stay safe stay sane, and care for each other. Thank you. Thank you for listening. My name is Eduardo Bindazane from EBZ Coaching. I'm a leadership and communication trainer and consultant. And if you have any questions about what you've heard in this episode, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website. I'll be answering the most interesting questions on the show. And if you know someone that will benefit from this type of content, please make sure you recommend this podcast to them. Thank you and see you next time.